Doop, doop, do. I do this instead. Rotate device. Oh, it locks it. Interesting. I didn't know it did that. Well, I can't film it like that. That's baloney. So it's just going to be the front view. Yeah. I don't know if it does or does not. Interesting. The X-Men game for Game Gear was fun, but yeah, it is super hard. Yo, Fortress, what's up, dude? Long time no see. Where's the squeak? It's beside me, but I've replaced the squeak with... I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. No, not on camera. I, uh, I found a guy throwing out a computer chair. Um, so I did that. Uh, folks over on YouTube, I'm still trying to figure this out. I apologize. Can you... Just like sound off in the comments there if you can still watch this while it's rotated to the left. It's not letting me like change the settings to do that, which is just kind of a pain in the butt. But hello, Dark. I can't see the last of your name there. Is it Poke Whale? But yeah, let me know if you can. It works. All right, cool. Because I want to film the video more like this. Oh, I should probably put my this on my lapel so i'm also over on tiktok uh, so i'm on tiktok and youtube gonna be focusing more on answering questions over on youtube however my comments like to disappear all the time uh, all righty perfect uh, so we're doing a full cap replacement yeah so i'm kind of highlighting so i made or i'm making rather an uh a ceramic capacitor kit for game gear but I refuse to sell it until I test it. So this Game Gear is the one that's getting tested. However, I want to make a video for anybody that buys these kits, or any kit for that matter, on how to recap their Game Gear. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of both. So yeah, Shane, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Do, 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 do. Nothing like a good Game Gear. Taylor, how you doing? Okay, so... I apologize, I'm going to be kind of uh, narrating this a little bit because it, it will be turned into a video eventually. Positive Ace, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it, dude. If you're on YouTube and you have TikTok and don't follow me there, you can find me on TikTok. That's where my, my biggest audience is. And if you're on TikTok here and you have YouTube, you can follow me there as well. Anyway, so let's start. <clears throat> so I'm going to be recapping this Sports Edition Game Gear. Um, all you need for it really is a driver a 4.5 millimeter game bit, a uh, Phillips head, or actually rather two Phillips head. I think one's a zero and one is a one. Uh, the smaller one's gonna be used for the inside. Now I have a link to the kit that I use here. This is just like a cheap Amazon kit. I think it was like 25 bucks for 230 pieces. Uh, and it's gotten me into every system I've ever worked on. I also have links there for cheaper kits. So I'll link those basically down in the description. Do, 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 do. Comment check, fellow Canadian. How's it going, my guy? Dan, what's up, dude? Uh, what's your recommendation for places to buy broken consoles? So the first place I ever got a broken console on was Facebook. I just literally put a message out on Facebook, like my, my private Facebook. I was like, hey, folks, uh, or like to my friends, I was like, does anybody have a broken game console that they don't want anymore or like want to see if I could take a crack at fixing it? And a few friends reach out and they're like, yeah, I've got like an old NES sitting in my basement. doesn't work anymore. Because like with my theory, me and Crossface there, you can't break broken. So if it's just sitting in a basement broken, what's the harm in you trying to work on it? Um, you can go to thrift stores or, or thrift stores or pawn shops. They often have like a collection of them in the back, especially if they're attempting their own repairs without uh, prior knowledge. Um, that's how I have most of my donor boards is I went to a, a, a pawn shop. And they had attempted a lot of botched repairs. So I got like a bundle of PS4 and Xbox and motherboards. Yeah, what's up? Okay, I'll be up in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so. Just in time putting my kid to bed. Can my name be in your TikTok video? Cubby, what's up, dude? Woohoo, <laughs> Game Gear. Sorry, I'm kind of going between TikTok and uh, uh, YouTube. Okay, so we have our Game Gear. Pardon me, our game gear in our 4.5 millimeter game bit. I'm gonna flip it over, and the one on the top here is a 4.5 millimeter. Now, I've seen some folks say that there is occasionally a Phillips up here. I haven't seen it myself yet. Apparently, some of the earlier models, maybe a, a zero model or a VA zero, uh, would have one. But once that's removed, 
You're gonna switch over to your Phillips, your number one. Stick that there, and you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six screws to remove in the back. Two are in the battery compartments. Whoop. Come on now, I'm slipping off this thing because I'm trying to hurry it. I like that crack sound. It's like one of my favorite things working on retro consoles. Somebody was like, I said that, I was like, oh, don't you love that sound? Because like, no matter what retro console you work on, it's that. And some guy just kind of like lost his mind in the comments one time. He's like, that's the, yeah, what did he say? It's like, that's the threads being destroyed. You're doing it wrong. I'm like, I, I don't think there's any other way of doing it, my guy. Like, but that's internet comments for you, I guess. Thanks for the inf or information. No problem. Hopefully it helps. Probably because it's a also a TikTok stream. Yes, if it's a little bit laggy, I apologize. My internet isn't like top notch, but I'm also kind of doing both. So let me know if anybody else is experiencing some lag there. Hey Ellie, what's up? LP, my evening's going good. Working on a game gear, can't go wrong. No lag on TikTok. That's good. No offense if there's going to be lag on either of them. I would hope it would be TikTok today just because I'm making a full video with this one, but whatever. Brian, thank you very much, dude. I appreciate that. You don't have to gift me anything, though. Like, honestly, I think gifts are a scam because you pay a dollar for them, and then when you gift somebody, they give you, like, they give the creator, like, five cents. Favorite system to work on? You know, that changes day to day. Um, I do enjoy Game Boy Colors. They're pretty easy. Console Karen, yeah, basically. Okay, so once those seven screws are removed, you'll be able to just pop off the back here. Now be careful because there is going to be um, wires holding in your power board as well as your audio board. Easy enough though, you just kind of pull on the side and those tug out. And again, pull on that, just slightly gently wiggle it back and forth. And then you're gonna also unplug your speaker. Come on, speaker, 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 there it goes. So that is out. So I'm just going to place this off to the side for a second. And I'm going to move to my smaller Phillips head bit. And I'm going to remove the uh, metal shield here so I can get to the audio board. DG, thank you for the gifts. But again, you don't have to send me gifts on either YouTube or TikTok. I think they're a scam. Game Gears did go through batteries like no one's business. So there's just four screws in the, uh, the little RF shield here. It's like a hard balance of trying to figure out YouTube versus TikTok of like where the game gear is going to be. There we go. It's a little better. Super riveting stuff right now, just removing screws for the most part. Okay, so when those four screws are out, this plate just easily pops off out of the way. And then your motherboard, pardon me, your audio board is just held in by two screws. And all these screws are the same size. You don't have to worry about mixing them up at all. Do, do, do. Game Boy Color is pretty nice to work on. Recently just modeled one for my cousin to play on. That's awesome, dude. Lefty Lucy, yeah. Never tighten these too tight. So there is our audio board. Now, a very common issue with Game Gears is there being no audio. Uh, and nine times out of ten, that is because of capacitors. Basically, nine times out of ten, any problem with a Game Gear is capacitors. So we're going to remove the power board. First, we have to remove this little plastic thing. It's just kind of like a dust cover that prevents uh, dirt from falling into the system. And just like the audio board, it's just two screws and that pops out. <laughs> How much does an average Game Gear mod cost? So parts alone, um, 
in Canadian at least. I don't know what the American dollar would be. Uh, just for a screen upgrade in just parts, it's around a hundred dollars, depending on the screen you get. Um, that's the, one of the cheaper screens. There's a lot of screens out there that are way, way more. Okay. Now that we have our power board and our audio board out, we're going to remove the main motherboard from the system itself. So I'm just going to switch back to my bigger Phillips head. I'm going to take out the screws that hold in the game slot. Now, in any cartridge system you ever work on, the screws in the game slot are usually the longest ones. How many F-bombs are dropped during some of these repairs? Um, off camera, a lot. Bugby, what's going on, dude? Welcome. Come on, this one's just being stubborn now. Out, 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 out. Okay, I'm going to switch back to my smaller one. Now you'll see here that there's this shiny piece here. This is like your back reflector. You don't need to remove these screws that are in the shiny part. You just need to remove the ones that are in the board. And you can see that the capacitors have the already exploded. It's going to take a bit of cleanup to kind of get in there on both sides. Over here for TikTok, they've exploded. That one's even cracked. Oh my goodness, they're both cracked. I've never seen them that bad before. But yeah, that would be a main reason. So a lot of the time I find if you have a dim screen, it's these two capacitors right here, these little beige ones that are responsible. I've seen a few people recap one of these, but not replace these because they look different than the other ones and they still have a dim screen. And the question comes up like, well, how come the recap didn't work? And it's because you need to replace those two. Yeah, I try not to swear too much um, on camera. I try to keep a PG for everybody so everybody can enjoy it, whether you know there's kiddos or people that just don't, uh, appreciate swearing so but like how many years has it been now I enlisted in 2010 13 years in the military nine years on an ambulance I swear a lot <laughs> do 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 So a little dull, I apologize, just removing every single one of these screws. I'm doing a, uh, a capacitor replacement um, and then a screen upgrade as well. 15 years still going. Congrats, man. Thanks for your service. I'm debating on getting out. It's kind of run its course. Do, 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 do. Oh my goodness, I need to get one of those electric drills or the electric screwdrivers. Adam, thank you so much for the gifts, but you don't have to send them to me, my friend. They're 100% a scam by TikTok and YouTube, in my opinion. Okay, so once those are out, you're going to remove this by pulling the bottom of the board out first and then out, or, and then out because you don't want to catch the contrast wheel and accidentally rip that off. Not that I've done that before. <clears throat> um, anyways, easy repair if you do. Not that I know. And there we go. So you are ready to start working on this. So I'm going to start with the power board because depending on which kit you use, if it's the electrolytic capacitor kits or if it's the ceramic one, both of them require electrolytic on the power board itself. So I'll start with that because it's super simple. Uh, do you have any availability, availability for new repairs? I don't. I am so backlogged. It's redonkulous. Actually, this one is part of my backlog. This gentleman's probably been waiting, I'd say, close to four or five months now. Because I have, like, one full-time job, two part-time jobs, and then this business, and then family. So, I'm like, eh. repairs are kind of slow. <laughs> okay, so... Flux, again, I'll leave that in my description or a link for that. Not absolutely required, but it makes it 10 times easier to do it. Now, if you're looking at what capacitors to take off, I like to put my finger just kind of on there, make sure that there's no charging here because you'll get a little shock. Uh, and then just kind of look and then flip over and pretty much on the exact opposite of where my finger is, is going to be where the two prongs are. So I'm just going to take that, take that. I'll do the same thing over on this capacitor. There's going to be three capacitors on VA1 and VA0 boards. 
Um, I believe there's a variant of VA4 boards that have four capacitors. They're pretty uncommon though. You've talked to me before about your game, you're no sounder picture. Yeah, it's 100% a, a capacitor problem, most likely. Erica, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Okay, so now that I have the flux on those capacitors, I like to use a solder sucker. Again, I'll leave this in my description. And a little bit of heat here. And basically you're just going to liquefy that solder, put the solder sucker on and zoop, suck it all up. You might have to do that a couple times. That one actually did pretty well though. The flux really helps when you do this. I used to do it without flux um, back when I started and it would like, I would be here like four or five times just trying to get all that solder out and still not get it all out. But doing it with flux, yeah, I'll like one shot it every time. So once that flux is out, Sometimes you can just kind of wiggle it. And if it's not loose, don't, don't try to pry it off. Just add a little bit more to the leg. And that will pop. Come on now, right out. There we go. So there's one. Now I also loosen this one. So I'm just gonna wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And I can see that one leg is moving, but the other isn't. So again, a little bit of heat. And that one will pop out. Now what you can also do, if you don't have a solder sucker or a solder wick, um, put heat to both pins at the same time while you're kind of pulling and you just pull it right out. The only problem with doing that is that those holes usually get full of solder. So you either have to try to heat it while you're trying to enter or throw in a new capacitor or you have to try to go back with wick or a solder sucker. But I'm just trying to show every option with, because who knows what tools everyone's going to have. But yeah, there we go. And there is our board with no capacitors. So I'm going to get a Q-tip. A little bit of 99% isopropyl alcohol. Clean, 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 clean. Do it on the back side as well where the flux was. Shine it all up. Perfect. Now, three capacitors that are always in every power board. Um, where are trimmers? Here they are. So we have an 820, I'm pretty sure it's 820. Yeah, 820 micro ferret, I believe it is. Make a fair in one of the two. Just gonna read comments really quick. Nothing over on YouTube that I can see. Uh, Instagram, or not Instagram, TikTok. Daughter got a scratch on her OLED. Ooh, it's a repair, it has to be replaced, unfortunately. Not the whole screen, which is a bummer because OLEDs are expensive. And yes, we're recapping a Game Gear. Ellie, thank you for that. Okay, so when you have a capacitor, electrolytic capacitor, you'll see that there is a white stripe on it, or sometimes there's a longer leg. Well, usually there's a longer leg. That is your negative side, and then any other side is your positive side. So negative white stripe, positive. And if you look at your board, if it's a through hole at least, you'll see a little white line in here. That's also indicating your negative. So match the negatives, your white line to your white space. And you're simply just going to push the capacitor through the two holes. And there you go. Now, you can put it down and solder it like that. However, if you are having a hard time and it keeps falling out while it's pushed in, just kind of bend these legs out a little bit. and It'll just kind of bite in there and grab. So again, using a little bit of flux. Again, like not absolutely required, but super helpful and it definitely makes better solder joints. So I highly recommend it. And put a little bit of flux on there. I'm going to come in, heat up the pad just for like a couple seconds here. It's like one 1,000, two 1,000, and then I'm going to put solder right in the corner of where the pad and the soldering iron meet. And that should give you a good solder blob. Now, if you're having the problem where you're like you put solder on and it's just sticking to your iron, um, one, your iron might not be hot enough. Two, your board is probably cold, so it's trying to go to the heat rather than the board. So that's why I say put it on. And uh, flux really helps with that as well. Do I have a YouTube channel? Yeah, Ace, I'm actually currently streaming over on YouTube as well. <laughs> I'm doing both because this one's gonna be a YouTube video. That's why I'm really narrating this one. Anyhow, once that capacitor's in, you're gonna see that these legs are sticking out. So we're just gonna get our trimmers and we're just gonna cut those right down. There we are. We have our first capacitor in our game gear. So moving on to the next one. This one is a 100 microfarad and the, the Capacitors in my kit match the uh, the proper size. So again, matching the white stripe to the white stripe. Pop it through. 
Going to bend these legs out a little tiny bit just to let it hold. Add a little bit of flux. And then add a little bit of solder. I should have my solder fan on right now to kind of like take care of some of these fumes, but it's super noisy and I really want to record audio. So with that one on, again, we're just going to trim. Here we are. We have our next capacitor on. Now, you'll see that this one is a little bit crooked. That's fine. It's not going to affect it in any way. It just doesn't look as nice, but it's going to be in your system, so it doesn't matter. Retro Gamer, Podcast Doggies, what's up? Master of Loops, FB, thanks, dude. Save the consoles, man. Okay, and then we have a 22 microfarad or farad, whichever one it is. I really got to look that up. And we're doing the exact same thing, matching whites to whites, pushing it through the board. Again, these capacitors in my kit here are the same size or pretty close to the same size, if not the exact same. So they'll all go into their respective little circles there that you'll see. I'm gonna go with some flux. A little bit of solder. Heat up the pad for a couple seconds. Push the solder into it. Good. Heat up the pad for a couple seconds, push some solder into it. Good, you don't wanna to have too much and definitely be sure that your, uh, your solder blobs aren't joining or touching because you'll short it out. And there we are, once everything is put in and trimmed, then we'll just get more isopropyl alcohol and just clean up some of that flux there. And there we are, it's as simple as that. And now your power board is ready to go. Put that off to the side. Now I'm just gonna quickly show the audio board. I don't think I'll show the full audio thing, or audio board rather, on the video. But there's a couple ways of taking these off. Um, one way is obviously you kinda get your, your pliers, your tweezers here. We'll get some flux. And a little bit in this corner, a little bit in this corner. And what I'm going to do is just kind of gently grab onto it. Going to heat that solder. Pull up that side. I'm going to heat up the other side. Pull that up as well. And there you go, your capacitors come off. Um, that is the, the proper way of doing it. Now, some people frown upon this, but the way I've done it and have great success is you just grab the capacitor with pliers and you twist it right off, pops off. I've never seen it do any damage to the board. Don't rip it off, like twist it off. And then that black piece will come out. Now the legs are still attached to the board here, but easy enough, you just get your soldering iron, just kind of give it like a little brush and that'll stick to your iron, just dab it into your brass and that will come right off. That's the preferred way I like to do it. Because it's so much faster. A Tamagotchi, what? <laughs> this one's a little tight in here. Now, using the electrolytic capacitor kit on the audio board is difficult. Um, it can be a little tedious. You have to kind of get creative with positioning, but it does work. I've done, I have some pictures on my, uh, I think my eBay account, um, that shows some different ways of doing it. I've tried, but I think it can, oh, you mess up connections. Uh oh, hope you didn't break something, dude. No comments over on the YouTube side yet? No, that's cool. No big deal. Can the YouTube side still hear me though? You guys good? Hope it didn't freeze or anything like that. 
So again, I'm just taking off those legs that are stuck on the board. Is that a game gear? Yeah, it is. You have to get another kit though? It, well, you've stumbled into the perfect live because I'm showing how I, uh, I do my capacitor kits or how I put capacitors on. Full detailed explanation because I'm making this into a YouTube video eventually. Now, when you're working around the power board, or pardon me, the audio board, just be careful because uh, there's a lot of plastic on here that you might accidentally bump with your iron, and that's going to melt it. Cubby, thanks for coming out, buddy. Take care, man. And I think that is it. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to be using electrolytic capacitors for this board. Or not electrolytic. I'm going to be using ceramic capacitors for this board. Do I replace GameCube controller thumbsticks? I haven't yet, but I can. I'm cleaning Game Gear games as we speak. Darth Dreads, what's up, my friend? Game Gear games, I find they can be a pain in the butt to open. Okay, so 47 is what I want. So there's two 47s, and we have our 100s. So I'll put on the 47s, and then I'll come back to it, but... So, super fun to do, honestly, so calming, but I know inhale. Yeah, make sure you get a fan, dude. Hey, Everest, my mailbox isn't open just yet, my friend. I need to get through the backlogs, like this one. This one's a backlog, technically. Okay, these capacitors are a bit of a pain to get out. These are tiny. Come on, open up. So the good thing about the ceramic capacitors is that they can go on either way. There's no right and there's no wrong. When the electrolytic ones, you have to put them in the right direction. We'll get into that in a moment, though. If this thing would just get out of the package, though, there's one. Okay. Glad it didn't, like, yeet it across the room or anything. As the kids say. Okay, and there's the second one. I'm going to try to move my YouTube camera up here a little bit. Do, do, do. Perfect. Okay, my mat's a little dirty now, but... So, the bigger circles on this board are, uh, are the 100s, and the smaller circles are the 47s. Now, what we should do here is get some solder wick. Oh, Everest, you're local? Yeah, shoot me a message, dude. I'm doing local repairs. And then we're just going to warm this up a little bit. Can I mod an original Game Boy? Yes, I have a few videos on that. No, I don't have any flux on here, that's why. Okay, so... Just going to put a bit of flux in again. Just because I'm showing this for the video, I'll just do this one here. Okay, so there's flux there. Again, this makes it way easier. Now, you don't have to replace the solder here. I'm pretty sure you could use the original stuff, but definitely recommend replacing it. Smoky. Okay, now that those pads are cleaned, I'm just going to heat them up a little bit. Here we go. Heat that up a little bit. Add that. Now, there's going to be two ways I'm going to put these electrolytic capacitors, or, yeah, the uh, ceramic capacitors on. First way is just, I'm going to place it on, heat up one side, and just kind of press it in, and then kind of gently push down on this side and press this in as well. Now, you have to kind of go back and forth a little bit just to really make it sink. This isn't the best nor easiest way, but uh, the other way requires a hot air station, which not everybody has. So I'm trying to show every way I can. Another way of doing this, which probably would have been easier, is before adding the, uh... Actually, you know what, that's what I'll do here. So, I'm just going to take solder off one of these sides. There we go. 
So with solder only on one side, I'm just going to heat it up, place it in. Oh, it's stuck to my tweezers. Heat it up, take the iron away, let that heat. Ah, oh, darn it. It's a little too low, that's why. Let's try this again. Heat it up. Let it stick to the board. There we go. Just give it a quick nudge. That's good. Not going anywhere. And now that it's pinned down to one, I'm going to go over here. There we go. It's a little bit crooked, and this is actually a bit of a cold solder joint here, so I'm just going to rework this one. There. It's a little crooked, but that is going to do the job. So with the other one, I'm going to put another 47 there and then more 100s, but I'm going to put this off to the side for a second. And we're just going to move to the main board quickly. So there's two ways of removing these capacitors on the main board. First way is get your tweezers or pliers. Um, actually, pliers probably work a little easier. And you'll see that these are stuck to the board. So away from the shiny side, you're just going to grab this and pull it up because it's glued to the board. Now, once that's pulled up, we can get our soldering iron and just touch one of the legs. That'll come off, and then we're going to touch the other leg. Come on now. And that comes off, and there you go. Now, that does take a little bit of time, but again, if you don't have a hot air station, it's effective, and it works. And for, like, the majority of my original repairs, that is how I removed every single capacitor. And it sucked butts. The hot air uh, method is way easier. But what I'll do here now again, a little bit of flux, a little bit of flux. And I don't think I'll be able to recap this whole thing on video here. But I'll show how I do everything at least. There we go. Oh, there is more comments. It just wasn't refreshing. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry, YouTube. Oh no. What have I done? <laughs> it just wasn't bumping up the conversation. Okay. UV light from the juice glows. I missed that one. I apologize, folks over on YouTube here. All right. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. I, if you had any burning questions, please ask them again. Uh, don't forget to mention your Tronic Fix collaboration for the original Game Boy mod. That's how I found you. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, that was great. That was such a, an awesome opportunity to work with Tronics there. I actually have a video coming out. I built a Game Boy for Gabriel, Gabriel Iglesias, or Fluffy. Um, that video is coming out soon. I actually have his PSP and two more Game Boys to do for him. The caps on YouTube chat exploded. Uh-oh. The comments are lost in the void. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Retro Stash Repairs. Thanks for coming out, man. Sorry, I hope you're still here. God darn it. Oh, man. I've really done it this time. There's so many comments. <laughs> yeah, for Fluffy. It's all good. Fixed the Game Boy Color recently. I paid $5 for the console. That's sick. Six for the back cover nine for the battery terminal seven for the speaker and four for the screen lens in total 31 dollars usd did i overpay yeah totally yeah 31 dollars. that's ridiculous <laughs> <clears throat> oh my goodness where'd that come from <clears throat> damn fluffy just switch back and forth ah all right now i have those comments i caught up sergeant dingus it's been a long time it is a game gear I'm fixing a game gear. Retro stash repairs over on TikTok. Well, what are we doing? <laughs> Alrighty. So that capacitor's off. Now, this is going to be a little noisy. I apologize, but this is the easiest way um, to pop off capacitors. This was taught to me by Retro6. He did a video on it. So I apologize. The beeps are kind of obnox or obnoxious, rather. So I'm going to put my heat to 380. I'm just going to kind of gently heat up my board here a little bit. Make sure I'm not missing any more comments. Yeah, it doesn't refresh, that's why. 
did Fluffly contact you or did you contact He contacted me. What's the best place to buy parts? It depends on the parts you want and what country you're in, etc., etc. Yeah, no, Fluffy found me on TikTok, of all places. He's like, hey, I'd love to get one of those Game Boys. I was like, you bet. And then after I did that, he was like, hey, can I get three more of the exact same things for my friends? So I did that. And then after that, he's like, hey, can I send you my two original Game Boys and a PSP for repair? So he wants one Game Boy modded and then one restored. So I've been a little slack on that because I have such a backlog. Um, I need to get to those next. But this one, I was like, I can get this system mostly done tonight or I can get half of a Game Boy done tonight. So I was like, well, let's do the, the Game Gear. Kind of work through my backlog a bit. Okay, so I've just kind of heated my board a little bit there, just so it's not cold. What I'm going to do is kind of swoop in here, hit this with some heat, just kind of give it a wiggle, and again, I shouldn't be holding it still. I should be moving. This one's going to be a little stiff because there's so much flux gook over it. Gook over it. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. And that's it. And that's That one's a little harder to pop off, but the more you do, the easier it becomes because you're heating up the board. So we're going to heat up this one here. There it goes. That one's off. And again, always keep that heat moving. So the key here is like the first time I did this, I had it on a low heat, thinking I damaged the board. And ironically, I damaged the board because I used a low heat because I was, I had to wait around on it for so long. Um, so high heat is your key. Now, be careful because you don't want to bump any of these components or else you'll lose them. Not that I've ever done that either. <laughs> now, if you're also putting a screen mod on like I am, with this, I can take off the screen, I can take off the original bulb, I can take off this capacitor, etc. Um, I'm not going to do that though because I want to test this one with the new capacitors on just to ensure it works. So I'm going to move over here now. Come on now. It's the ones that have the uh, all the capacitor gook all over it. And by the way, if you've never done this before, it's going to smell like fish. Because that's just, for whatever reason, that's what blown capacitors smell like. This board, or this side of the board, is going to take a little bit longer. Because it's not as hot as the other side. That's okay. There we go. Now, so I took this one off. This one's a 33 microfarad or microfarad. I can never remember. I got to figure that out. Um, so what I'm going to do is last time I added solder to one side and then I soldered to it. But because I'm using heat, I'm going to add solder to both sides. There we go. And I need to find my 33. There it is right there. Now, this is the whole reason I'm testing this kit is because I think some of these are a little bit too small. Yeah, it's stinky. It's the worst. Felt smells like a fish market. Okay, these little blister packs are a pain. Now making these kits is miserable because I had to like individually label all these tiny little things. Now let's see if this is going to be big enough. Oh yeah, that's going to fit. So I'm going to hold on to this electrolytic or ceramic. I keep mixing them up and I'm just going to heat the solder blobs here. Just being careful with that plastic there. When that liquefies, I'm going to take away my heat. A little bit more heat here. The other side didn't melt. Burning my hand a little bit because it's in the wrong position. Oh no, it didn't work. I think this capacitor, no, it should be big enough. I think I'm just not holding the capacitor right. So you just got to be careful because if you put air to it, 
and then um, let go of it, it could blow away, and then that capacitor is gone. It's literally lost to the wind. So we're trying to solder. There we go. So let that solder melt. There we go. Yeah, it seems like it's just the tiniest bit too small, which is okay. I can work this with my soldering iron. So I'm just going to add a little more solder here and just kind of drag it over. And there we are. Just be extra sure. Oh, no, that one tilted up there. That's a bummer. Uh, there we go. That should do it. Perfect. Okay, so that's one electrolytic. Oh, goodness, ceramic capacitor on. Have you repaired a Jaguar before? I haven't. I'd love to. If you have one that needs repaired, send it on over. How much do you mind my Game Boy? I don't give quotes over public text because my prices change sometimes and everybody wants a different build so I can't really give an accurate one okay no more comments that I've missed on YouTube I think it's not scrolling at all so I think we're good I think we're good Oof, I hope we're good anyway so that is how you put on an electric or pardon me a ceramic capacitor Wanted to get the forearm tattoo. Dude, I've had this since before I started the YouTube. So I've got Assassin's Creed. And then I've got... Uh, oh, it's going to be a weird twist. So the sword's going to look off. I've got Zelda. Okay, now really quick. I'm not putting electrolytic capacitors on this board. But I'll show how I do it. So I've seen a few ways of this being done. None of them are really wrong. Some are better than the others. Or others, rather. So, this, I'm not even, this is just a random capacitor I found. I'm just going to reuse the solder that's on there. So, when you're using electrolytic, again, you need to make sure that you have the negative facing the negative. If you look at these boards, um, negative is always going to be on the same side. So, if capacitors are facing this way, all the negatives will be on the same side. But if you look very, very closely, you'll see little pluses, little positive signs. That's obviously going to be your positive. So I've seen some folks solder these on like this, where I call them daddy long leg method or the daddy long leg method. Ah, fudge. My arm just brushed up against the, uh, the hot air station that was not yet cooled. Anyhow, <clears throat> that sucks. Okay, so I call this the, the, uh, the daddy long legs method. So I'm just going to touch this pad here, melt it in. Touch this pad here, melt it in super common especially for or for people that are new to this um the reason i don't like this is because those legs just encourage places for it to short out uh and it's not as stable now when you're doing this you got to make sure that none of these cross those little gold pads because that's where some of these supports are going to go in the system so it won't close properly but there's nothing wrong with doing it this way it does work and again just make sure that you have your negative line on the negative side but the way i usually do this is I call it the foot method. I have names for everything. So I found out what direction it goes. So I'm going to put it on like this. I'm going to bend these capacitor legs down. So they're basically 90 degrees from the capacitor. And then right at the bottom, I'm going to tilt them up like such. And then uh, you have basically these two little feet that stick out. Now, I usually do trim these. So they're only a couple millimeters long. Um, actually, yeah, yeah, I could do that. It's just going to show something else after. So I have something that looks like this. Two little feet that stick out. And you do the exact same thing. You just, sometimes you might just spread them out a little further, that's all. So ensure that you don't have anything, um, yeah, positive is positive. Now, if I have a pad like this, I'll just kind of cock it off to the side here. And then I'll solder it in like this. But just for the, the point of this video here, I'll solder this one on, solder this one on. And that way it lays flush with the board. It doesn't take up a lot of room. It, you know, looks pretty neat. So that's one way. And then the other way is what I call the toboggan method. Again, coming out with more names. 
So toboggan method, which I really use a lot on the uh, the audio board because it's very, very limited for space. So I'm just basically going to push these down. It's better when they're longer, but they're going to go underneath it, kind of like the legs of a toboggan. And again, the same thing. Now this is a little bit hotter, or pardon me, harder to solder to, and it's easier when I have longer legs, but Yeah, I think these legs are a little bit too short. That's why I was hesitant on cutting them originally. But, but yeah, you solder that. And that is like the most, um, probably the, the ideal way to save space because you can kind of move it any way or any which way you want. But yeah, that's how you solder on the electric uh, capacitors. So I have both those kits um, on my eBay store, um, the ceramic and the electrolytic. Uh, so whatever one you prefer really electrolytic is a little bit easier uh, if you're a beginner in my opinion just because the little ones can blow away and whatnot but yeah that's basically the gist of how i recap a game gear now i'm going to kind of go through all of these replace them all with the ceramic ones um, as for the live stream i'm going to have to cut it short uh, i was hoping to do this whole board but my wife made nachos and they're getting cold <laughs> so i hope everybody is doing great uh, okay, we got more YouTube comments. Thanks for the vinegar on the corrosion. Yeah, it's super handy, hey? Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that ceramic capacitors are rated properly. You're right. They're, sometimes they can be off by like 20%. So that's why you went with that? That's a very good point. I should mention that too when I, uh, when I put these kits up. Hope you're good and didn't get burned. I don't see a burn mark yet. Just a good singe though. Is MacRD actually that good for broken consoles? Uh, we don't have that in Canada, um, unfortunately. So I couldn't tell you that. I think uh, Retro Stash Repair actually answered that. Yeah, he did. I think it's a good deal. Hey, yo, what's going on, Pixel? Enjoy your nachos. Thanks, dude. All right, heading over to TikTok here really quick. Have you heard of anything about the iPhone 4 or 14 microphone issues? I have no idea, man. It's like I do video game repairs when it comes to like phones and all that stuff. I don't know. Uh, I, I usually wear my garlic bread hoodie. I do. I'm actually in a t-shirt because I was working out uh, before I came on stream. So I was like sweating to death. How long have I been rebuilding? About two years now I got into it. Um, funny enough, off a YouTube video uh, from Odd Tinkering. Well, folks, I am going to skedaddles. Thanks so much for uh, everybody coming out. Really appreciate it. Um, keep an eye out for this video. I've got so many videos I just need to edit. That's the problem I have mostly is just sitting down to edit them. But this one will be out hopefully sooner than later because I want to get out with the launch of these kits on my YouTube or my eBay store and website. Um, I do have merch on my um, website if you're interested in that. I try to keep their prices as low as I possibly can. Um, and there's stickers and all that. I haven't added my newest stickers, but uh, I don't know if anybody's going to be able to see them from here. Like, desk is a mess anytime I start doing repairs doesn't matter how clean my desk is it becomes destroyed but so TikTok, uh, new stickers are right here they're um, holographic which are fancy and YouTube new stickers are there I haven't posted them yet but they'll be like three bucks or something like that again trying to keep uh, cost low all right folks thanks uni lab thanks for coming out dude save the consoles man ceramic caps behave differently Juice up so they lose a lot. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think uh, some folks they used Retro Six's capacitor kit, and then they they went online and they're just trashing it. They're like, "Oh, the values are off." But then people in the comments were like, "Well, that's that's just electrolytic capacitors, unfortunately." So, um, however, they're highly requested. Um, I get a lot of requests for them, so I was like, "Well, you know, I've been selling the the electrolytic ones probably for like a, a year now, and they're probably my best seller." Um, so I was like, well, if people want to use electrolytic ones, they'll, they got them. Anyways, folks, thank you all so much. I will enjoy my nachos, uh, Sergeant Dingus, and I hope you all have a great night. And as always, let's save the consoles. I got to find out how to end these streams. Okay. YouTube, take care, folks. TikTok.